what did I just do there? I did something that probably everyone in this room and the people watching around the world do every day. I just threw a soiled food wrapper in the garbage. Do you ever stop and think what's going to happen to that soiled food wrapper? It'll probably end up in a landfill where none of the valuable materials in that wrapper will ever be recovered. In fact, landfilling is the predominant waste disposal method worldwide. What is the significant environmental footprint that landfilling causes? Are there, uh, are there other solutions? Well, plasma is one of the solutions that innovative minds have come up with to address this. But I'll come back to that in a moment. The developed world generates, on average, a half a ton per person per year of household waste. This is actually an astounding number until you think about the Canadian number, which is more than three quarters of a ton per person per year, or two kilograms per day. What this represents to, for all of the waste in Canada in a year can generate up to 2.7 million garbage trucks full of waste every year. If we want to use another perspective, uh, if we were to look at the Montreal skyline, we're talking about filling 98 Placeville Marie's full of the waste we generate as Canadians. Now, increasingly, waste is being diverted from landfill and being returned into the economy through recycling. Nonetheless, far and away, landfill is still the predominant waste disposal method worldwide. This is where my food wrapper will end up, in a landfill. Another number to ponder. Household waste only makes up 10% of all the waste we generate. Our mines, our smelters, our refineries, our manufacturers, including the ones that made that wrapper, uh, all produce hazardous, toxic, and even biological waste that needs to be disposed of responsibly. And, unfortunately, these wastes, too, typically end up in landfills. If, certainly, you know, if we want to know what a landfill looks like, I've prepared this simplified graphical representation of a landfill. With household waste, typically, biogas is emitted at the global warming potential of 28 to 36 times carbon dioxide. Uh, now, normally, once a landfill is full, it'll be capped, and then those biogases will be treated, and in some cases, even, even turned into energy. But also, we have a, 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 a chemicals which will leach from that waste and accumulate in the bottom of a landfill in the form of what I like to call a toxic soup. Now, these, this toxic soup is treated properly, you know, captured, treated, and disposed of. But in most places in the world, including in many developing countries, there is no, land, no biogas capture system, no protective liner, and certainly no treatment of that toxic soup. Climate and potable water are all negatively impacted by these practices. In fact, if you look on the OECD website, it truly sums it up. Inappropriate waste management impacts human health and the environment through soil and water contamination, air quality, climate, land use, and landscape. So, what are we to do? As a society, we must continue to practice the three R's. What are they? Reduce, reuse, recycle. These are important principles, and we must maintain these. But we cannot simply say that once we have done the three R's, that we are to simply bury the rest. This is unacceptable, and I hope that if your only takeaway today is that the status quo is not sustainable, then I've accomplished something. So, so is there another way? Yes, there is. Let's talk plasma. Your high school science teachers taught you, probably taught you, that there were three states of matter. What are they? Solids, liquids, gases. Well, damn those teachers. They're wrong. There's a fourth state, and it's called plasma. What is plasma? Well, it's like a gas, but in a highly electrically charged or ionized state. The best, way I can, the best method I could use to describe plasma is to give you some examples. The surface of the sun is in a plasma state. That lightning bolt that stretches across the sky is plasma. In fact, the northern lights 
are plasma as well. In fact, neon lights and even that big screen plasma, plasma TV, that's plasma as well. In fact, any element on Earth can be converted into a plasma state. In fact, 99% of the known universe is plasma. So why am I talking about plasma? When I started this talk, how about a soiled food wrapper? It's because plasma can be used as a tool to transform this soiled food wrapper into energy and valuable construction materials. But first, how do we make plasma? Particularly as it relates to the tool for waste, there are, there are numerous ways of, of, of creating a plasma. You could either, essentially what you're doing is you're, you need electricity that generates an arc. You do that, you create that across a, a gas, and then you really transform that, plas, that gas into a plasma state. You can see on the, on the left, we, use, we can use a plasma torch. Or on the right, this is a top-down view of a furnace where we can create arcs in a furnace. Now, as it relates to waste, how this works is as follows. You take unsorted municipal solid waste or household waste, you feed it into a very hot plasma process, a plasma furnace. The intense thermal and electrical and chemical conditions, we're talking thousands of de degrees, truly will break down all that waste into its elemental constituents. What am I talking about? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and metals. No compound can, can sustain, can, can really maintain itself with the intense uh, temperatures and conditions that a plasma present. But using chemistry, and this is where I now thank my high school science teachers, Mr. Bank and Mr. Boyd, I get to recombine these elements into desired products. The gas off of a plasma process is called syngas, and that syngas can be fed to an engine to make electricity. And the glassy rock-like material that's also produced from a plasma is called a vitrified slag. This vitrified slag encapsulates all the toxic inorganic materials that appear in the waste. It is, it is non-toxic and does not leach, leach to, the, uh, to the environment. As a minimum, I can take that out of 95 to 98 percent volume reduction and landfill it. But why would I want to do that when I can fully recycle that material and incorporate it into construction materials such as asphalt and concrete? In fact, the University of Sherbrooke have done some work where they've actually reduced the amount of cement and concrete by 30 percent using this material. We can rebuild our crumbling infrastructure using waste. Amazing. So, so let, let, I mean, with, with, the, with this vitrified slag and with the plasma process, to illustrate the power of plasma, we, we can, for example, build nearly 2,000 kilometers per year of double-lane highways using slag-enhanced concrete with all of the waste we've generated in Canada. And with that same amount of waste, we can power all of Montreal and half of the surrounding Montreal area, uh, household power needs of Montreal and the surrounding area using plasma. In fact, you know, plasma is, has been used in society already. Uh, U.S. Air Force Base operated a plasma waste energy system. Our next generation, the next generation of aircraft carriers called the Gerald Ford class, all have, will all have compact plasma waste processing systems on board. And plasma is also being used and being developed right now to rid the world of some of the, the, the most toxic materials known to man, chemical warfare agents. Plasma's small footprint actually enables mobile systems which could be moved to where these wastes are stored. And on the non-military front, plasma is being used to destroy refrigerants, which are formerly ozone-depleting substances, but used to be and still are super greenhouse gases. Did you know that an improperly recycled refrigerator can emit up to two tons of carbon dioxide equivalents to the atmosphere? In fact, plasma, can, you know, through the destruction of these refrigerants, can actually be used to generate carbon offset credits under both the Quebec and California cap-and-trade regulations in compliance with the Kyoto Protocol. 
So, plasma looks like it's that magic bullet for my soiled food wrapper, as well as all of the chemicals and, and toxic waste generated in the production of that soiled food wrapper. So what's the problem? Why don't we have plasma systems or have other advanced thermal processing technologies like pyrolysis or gasification all over the world? Three words. Actually, one word, one acronym, one symbol. One. All we want when we throw this soiled food wrapper into the garbage and take that garbage out to the curb is for it to be taken away, out of sight, out of mind. Two, NIMBY, or not in my backyard. Now, nobody wants a big industrial plant in their backyard like an incinerator or a plasma plant. I understand NIMBY. I, as a city councillor, a former city councillor, I experienced NIMBY firsthand, not as it relates to waste management, but to rezoning and urban planning. I get NIMBY. The problem with NIMBY is that you are making the waste. Why are you making it someone else's problem for disposal? A sustainably developed community deals with its own waste. A way is not a solution. First, you apply the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. But then you use technologies to be able to, like plasma, in order to completely recover all of the energy and materials from that waste. And these systems need to be in your backyard, not somebody else's. Here's the third barrier. In Canada, I can bury garbage in the ground for 50 bucks a ton. Most developing countries in the world, uh, sorry, develop, in developing countries, I just take the garbage, leave it out in the field, doesn't cost me anything. For plasma or other advanced thermal processing technologies, I need to charge a minimum of 100 or more dollars per ton for the proper disposal of that waste. These three barriers are the reason why landfilling is still the predominant waste disposal method worldwide. So what are we to do? We know that burying garbage in the ground creates a toxic legacy for our children and our grandchildren. Greenhouse gases are being emitted, and the water table is being poisoned by these practices. This is all happening now. This is why we must act now. We have technologies in the world today to properly deal with the, the disposal of waste and the maximum recovery of that waste. Plasma is, in fact, one of those. We must let our elected officials know that the status quo is no longer tolerable. We must create a regulatory and fiscal environment whereby only ultimate waste is buried, meaning waste that's buried that has been fully maximized in terms of its recovery. And we need to be prepared to pay a little more for the responsible processing of our waste. We must introduce the concept of life cycle, even to post 3R waste, reduce, reuse, recycling. Much in the way that we recycle our paper, our plastic, our cardboard, our metals, we can still give this soiled food wrapper a second life. The unrecyclable paper and plastic in this wrapper can be used to make energy. And the inorganic filling agents in this wrapper can be used to help make roads, and, 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 and we can use these roads for generations upon generations. So do we really want this soiled wrapper to be sitting in the bottom of a landfill, doing nothing for us but hurting our health in our environment? I hope not. I really hope not. Thank you.